Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you. India conducts mock drills at hospitals to check COVID readiness. Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif pledges to eliminate terrorism from Pakistan. And Nepal's new Premier Dehel forms eight member cabinet with three deputy prime ministers. And now for all the details. Health authorities conducted mock drills in hospitals across India on Tuesday to check readiness for coronavirus after a recent rise in cases in some countries, including neighboring China. As of Tuesday, India reported an active case load of 3,421. Hospitals across India conducted mock drills on Tuesday to check readiness for coronavirus after a rise in cases was reported in some countries, including neighboring China. As part of the drill, India's health minister Mansukh Mandavia visited Safdajang Hospital in New Delhi to monitor the preparations. As of Tuesday, India reported an active case load of 3,421. Although infections have fallen sharply in recent months, India has also logged four cases of the Omicron sub-variant BF.7, which is driving the huge COVID surge in China. And today, in the whole country, the most important treatment of all the mock drills is being done in the hospital, so that all the hospitals have increased in the country, so that all the hospitals have been ready in the country. ताकि देश के नागरिकों को दिक्कत ना रहे और उसको अच्छी तरह से ट्रीटमेंट मिल सके। हेल्थ के वर्कर्स ब्रोड डमी पेशेंट्स एंड ट्रीटेड देम ड्यूरिंग मॉक ड्रिल्स इन श्रीनगर एंड कानपुर सिटीज टू सी इफ द हेल्थ के फैसिलिटीज वर इक्विप्ड इनफ टू टैकल द राइज इन पेशेंट्स। प्रिपेयर्डनेस ऑफ कुछ एक्सपीरियंस भी नहीं था तो अचानक आया था तो उसके लिए हम थोड़ा सा मुश्किल जरूर आए थे मगर चूंकि आज का जो कोविड है इसमें हम पूरी तरह से प्रिपेयर है हमारे पास ऑक्सीजन सिलेंडर्स है हमारे पास प्लांट्स है The government last week asked authorities across states to keep a lookout for any new variants. A negative COVID-19 test report has also been made mandatory. For travellers arriving from China, Japan, South Korea, Singapore and Thailand. A catastrophic second wave in India last year that was driven largely by the more infectious and dangerous Delta variant had ravaged the country's health system. Moving on, as cold wave tightens its grip over northern India, people were left shivering in different cities of the region on Tuesday, while low visibility due to dense fog affected road and rail traffic. Parts of the famous Dal Lake in Kashmir Valley was also seen covered with ice. The weather office has predicted the cold wave situation to continue for the next few days. As cold wave situation prevailed in northern India, parts of the famous Dal Lake froze in Srinagar city of Jammu and Kashmir territory on Tuesday. With temperatures dropping in the city, portions of the lake's surface were seen covered with ice, while people who moved on boats were forced to break it in order to make way. Jammu and Kashmir is currently witnessing Chillai Kalan, a 40-day period of harsh winter during which the minimum temperature hover below the freezing point. पूरा फ्रीज हो रहा है इस तरह इस वक्त हमको तोड़ना पड़ता है इसमें बहुत सारी मेहनत होती है सवेरे सवेरे बिल्कुल मॉर्निंग और ऊपर से ठंडी बहुत ज़्यादा है यहाँ पे सर मीनवाइल रेजिडेंट्स वर लेफ्ट शिवरिंग इन सिटीज ऑफ न्यू दिल्ली एंड लखनऊ इन द नॉर्दन प्लेन्स ड्रेस्ड इन वुलन क्लोथ्स Low temperatures and fog in recent days have also made it difficult for early walkers to step out and exercise as they fear reduced visibility might cause untoward incidents. For the 
बचाव नहीं कर सकता इंसान ना अब सामने को क्या आ रहा है किसी को क्या पता कोहरे में चल रहा है और सुबह सुबह बंदा निकलता जल्दी अब रनिंग करने वाले हम जैसे निकलते हैं तो दिक्कत होती है बहुत ज़्यादा रनिंग करने में एयर एंड रेल मूवमेंट इन नॉर्दर्न पार्ट ऑल्सो फेस्ड हर्डल्स ड्यू टू डेंस फॉग रिड्यूसिंग विजिबिलिटी टू जस्ट फिफ्टी मीटर्स इन सम एरियाज In eastern Patna city around 5 trains were cancelled and a couple of them were running late due to dense fog. The Indian Weather Office has forecast cold wave conditions to continue over northern parts of India for the next few days. A cold wave is declared in the plains of India when the minimum temperature dips to 4 degrees Celsius or falls 4.5 degrees Celsius below normal to 10 degrees Celsius or below. And in news from Pakistan, Pakistan's Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif has vowed to eradicate militancy across the country amid the renewed multiple attacks by banned outfit Tehreek e Taliban Pakistan. Addressing a gathering on Monday, Sharif said the menace of terrorism was on the rise, but the state would crush it very soon and no effort would be spared to prevent its return. Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif on Monday vowed to eradicate militancy across Pakistan as the country has suffered multiple attacks from banned terror outfit TTP, the Tehreek e Taliban Pakistan, in past few days. Addressing a gathering in Dera Ismail Khan, Sharif said the menace of terrorism was on the rise, but the state would crush it very soon and no effort would be spared to prevent its return. Local media reports suggest that a meeting of the National Security Committee would be summoned in a few days to take stock of the security situation. Inshallah, I will be confident that these situations are going to be stopped and that the head of the head of the head of the head of the head इसको कुचलने के लिए इन हम मीटिंग कर रहे हैं और कोई हम धक्की का फरोजात नहीं करेंगे मैं आपको यकीन दिलाता हूं और तमाम वसाइल हम बुरेकार लाएंगे और इन मिलकर सुबाई हुकूमत और वफाक और इदारे मिलकर इन इसको हम अपना डील करेंगे और इसको मुकम्मल इसकी बेहकनी होगी ताकि पाकिस्तान के अंदर दोबारा अमन लौट के आए मीन वाइल ऑपोजिशन पार्टी लीडर्स लम्बास्टेट दी रूलिंग कोलेशन over failure to control terrorism PTI senior leader Fawad Chaudhry said while during previous regime of PTI western media projected Pakistan as a top tourist destination now foreign diplomats are being advised to limit their movement in Islamabad aaj dobara hum terrorism ki taraf unfortunately chale gaye hain aur maine aapko figures batayi jo yahan pe abhi tak logon ki shahadatein hui hain aaj america ne और यूरोपीय यूनियन ने अपने एम्बेसडर्स को और अपनी एम्बेसी की टीम को ये कहा है कि वो इस्लामाबाद में भी बाहर ना निकलें और जो इस्लामाबाद के फाइव स्टार होटल्स हैं वहाँ पे जाने से उन्हें रोक दिया गया ओवर दी पास्ट वीकेंड पाकिस्तान विटनेस्ड मल्टीपल अटैक्स बाय टीटीपी इन बलोचिस्तान प्रोविंस विच किल्ड एटलीस्ट सिक्स सिक्योरिटी पर्सनल द ग्रुप ऑल्सो क्लेम्ड अड ब्लास्ट इन इस्लामाबाद लास्ट फ्राइडे that killed one policeman the renewed attacks come after ttp's withdrawal from a ceasefire with the government the banned outfit is not directly associated with afghan taliban but pledges allegiance to them moving on a senior un official in afghanistan met with the taliban's economy minister and has urged the islamic emirate to reverse a ban on female humanitarian workers that charities fears will worsen winter hardships The United Nations in a statement said the millions of Afghans need humanitarian assistance and removing barriers is vital. Ramiz Araq Barav, the acting head and humanitarian coordinator of UNAMA, the UN assistance mission in Afghanistan, on Monday met Taliban's economy minister Mohammad Hanif and urged the administration to reverse a ban on female humanitarian workers that charities fear will worsen winter hardships in a statement unema mentioned that millions of afghans need humanitarian assistance and removing barriers is vital this comes as the taliban administration on saturday ordered all local and foreign non-governmental organizations ngos not to let female staff work until further notice as some had not adhered to the administration's interpretation of the islamic dress code for women The directives barring women from working at NGOs came from Hanif's ministry. 
the orders do not apply directly to the United Nations, but many of its programs are carried out by NGOs subject to the order. Four major global NGOs whose humanitarian efforts have reached millions of Afghans have already announced they were suspending operations. This came after Taliban last Tuesday ordered an indefinite ban on university education for the country's women, months after imposing a ban on secondary schools for girls in March. The latest restrictions on women are likely to undermine the Taliban-run administration's efforts to gain international recognition and clear sanctions that are severely hampering the economy. In news from Nepal, Nepal's new Prime Minister Pushp Kamal Dehel has formed an eight-member cabinet with three deputy Prime Ministers. Dehel, who took oath on Monday, unexpectedly became Prime Minister for a third time after leaving his previous coalition and securing the support of the opposition CPN UML party and five other smaller groups. CPN Maoist Centre Chairman and Nepal's new Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dehel has formed an eight-member cabinet with three Deputy Prime Ministers. Dehel, who was sworn in as the Premier on Monday, unexpectedly claimed the post for a third time after leaving his previous coalition and securing the support of the opposition, CPN, UML party and five other smaller groups. Last month's election in the Himalayan nation had returned a hung parliament. Dehel has kept the foreign ministry for himself, while the key finance portfolio has been given to Vishnu Prasad Podel of the UMLN party. Another key appointment is that of Rabi Lamichane, a television talk show host, to the interior ministry. The regime change comes as inflation in Nepal is at more than 8%, the highest in six years. The Himalayan nation also faces dwindling foreign exchange reserves with an increasing dependence on imports of basic goods. The country has witnessed 10 government changes since the 239-year-old monarchy was abolished in 2008. And in news from Maldives, former Maldives President Abdullah Yameen will appeal as soon as possible against his conviction and jailing for 11 years on corruption and money laundering charges, his lawyer had said. Yameen, the opposition PPM Progressive Party of Maldives, candidate for the next election due in 2023, was sent to prison on Mafushi Island on Sunday to start a sentence following the order from the Maldives Criminal Court. The 63-year-old has denied any wrongdoing and will serve his time in a special compound in the prison which has been previously used to jail other high-profile politicians. Yamin, who lost power in 2018, will remain the party's presidential candidate for the 2023 election, the PPM said. And the UN Refugee Agency has said that the possible sinking of a boat in recent weeks with 180 Rohingya Muslims on board could make 2022 one of the deadliest years at sea in almost a decade for the community. Nearly one million Rohingya from Myanmar are living in crowded facilities in Muslim-majority Bangladesh, including tens of thousands who fled their home country after its military conducted a deadly crackdown in 2017. The UN Refugee Agency has said that the possible sinking of a boat in recent weeks with 180 Rohingya Muslims on board could make 2022 one of the deadliest years at sea in almost a decade for the community as refugees try to flee desperate conditions in Bangladesh camps. The United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, UNHCR spokesperson Bawar Baloch on Twitter said the fear that a boat that set sail at the end of November was missing with all 180 on board presumed dead. He, however, hopes that they are still alive somewhere. Meanwhile, a boat carrying 185 Rohingya refugees reached the shores of Aceh in Indonesia on Monday, one day after another boat of 57 other Rohingya reached the province after spending nearly a month adrift at sea. Two other boats carrying a total of 230 Rohingya landed in Aceh last month, while Sri Lanka's Navy rescued 104 Rohingya this month and Thai authorities saved six others. Nearly one million Rohingya are living in crowded facilities in Muslim-majority Bangladesh after fleeing deadly military crackdown in Myanmar in 2017. The number of Rohingya leaving Bangladesh in ports this year has jumped more than five-fold from a year earlier to nearly 2,400 rights groups estimate.
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.